Welcome, friends. <laughs> to a mind-numbingly erotic adventure of the most deranged kind. Friends, <clears throat> I often get asked, what's it like, the seavage, living in such laps of luxuries? Hmm? I never know how to answer. So I've decided to just show you just how wonderful and geeky and soft and squishy Casa de Sievage is. Now, I tend to do this every other year. <laughs> uh, but we keep getting new subscribers. We keep getting new people to the channel and they don't always go through all of the videos and we're racking up those videos folks um, so here we are 2020 fresh fresh in the new year for a brand new geeky house tour of the of the seepage so what will you join me Let's start down here, folk. This is the living area. You know, this is where we like to decompress and think about the residual cream of the day. Very stressful lives, especially my wife. Um, truth be told, this really isn't her spot. <laughs> she has her spot that she immediately goes to and we'll show that after this room. But this is... I guess we call this the the general sci-fi fantasy geek room, I guess. Um, the living room, the living area. Um, it's a lot of Star Wars, but also we've got some other things of the science fiction fantasy uh, genres that you will see and, uh, and kind of see through the house. So, but uh, yeah, so we've got our mantle here, our fireplace that soothes the cold winter bits with heat and hotness as a fireplace is supposed to do but it also holds this these beautiful small creatures that uh, we've frozen in time and uh, one day we will let loose, fully animated, and they'll go on adventures without us. I can't wait to hear them. So we've got Boba Fett. <laughs> this is a sideshow, uh, premium format. And then we got the NECA Turtles from the 1990 film. Gorgeous, beautiful film actually celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. Mm. I'm sure we'll get thick into that. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, we are a Star Wars family through and through. Uh, my wife loves it, my kid loves it of course. <clears throat> and Katie, my wife, is huge on these Hot Toy Sideshow collectibles. And so she <laughs> Uh, likes to uh, spend a ridiculous amount of money on them. I'm <clears throat> far too cheap to do it myself. <laughs> but she says, what the hell? And she goes for it. So we've got the one of the Star Wars cases. This is actually her Millennium Falcon. But this is the uh, Power of the Force when it came back in 95. So this is that version. Um, and we got Luke, Jedi Luke, Jedi Darth Vader, Hot Toys, Sideshow, we got a um, Obi-Wan's lightsaber here. Oh, we got a vintage 1977 uh, cup from Star Wars, the cup is back there. We got uh, Luke in his uh, rebel gear, X-wing gear, and we've got 
Old Man Luke from Force Awakens, R2, Sideshow. Uh, back there is a vintage uh, Empire Strikes Back video cassette display, um, but it's housing the Empire Strikes Back novelization. So I put that there. And then we got Ray and Kylo Ren, Hot Toys, and in the middle there is a uh, six inch black series Obi-Wan. And we got BB-8 that came with Ray. And then down at the bottom is the box for the original Jabba the Hutt playset from 1983. Look at that! Look at it. Look at it. Word. You know what I'm saying? I was born in 77, so I call myself a Star Wars kid. It's all I know. You know what I'm saying? I began to grow, and Star Wars was in the forefront of my cerebral cortex. It was, it was just a part of my DNA. Um, <clears throat> here is a, another case. Man, I wish there was more light in here. Sorry, folks. I hope it's coming out. I don't know. Um, but So we've got a couple of pops. I'm not a big pop person, but these two, I guess, we had to have. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is uh, the Leia Bausch mask that I had made for Katie for our first Christmas together, as well as the thermal detonator. I don't know if the... Oh, yeah, it's still working. Mm. Just holding a thermal detonator. Well, yes, that's Katie's. She flipped out. She actually cried when she opened that. I have the video footage. Uh, this is, I love the Biker Scouts. Um, Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, I was six years old in the theater watching that thing, flipping out, losing my little six-year-old shit. Um, but the Biker Scouts, I just love their look. I love Endor. I love the speeder bikes, all that shit. Biker Scouts all the way. I want a Biker Scout helmet. Uh, now we got a bunch of Gentle Giant, um, Busts and Maquettes. Uh, this one is primarily from A New Hope. And then this is a little bit of uh, Empire Strikes Back. And then, and then behind the maquettes and busts are the VHS of the original trilogy. The original VHSs, the VHSI. Uh, along with a Han poster in carbonite. And then we got Jabba's Palace uh, miscreants here. We got the Rebo, Max Rebo Ban. Uh, we got uh, a really cool anime style maquette of Bausch Leia. We got um, Lando in Skiffguard back there. And then on the bottom, I, I guess it's a little bit of both. I mean, there's some New Hope Jawas. Then we got Return of the Jedi, Wicket, and Admiral Akbar, and Salacious Crumb. And then in the back there, there's a really cool vintage Return of the Jedi cake topper set <laughs> that my wife got me. And Return of the Jedi, um, the original coloring books are in there. And then, of course, we got BB-8. This is that remote control BB-8, and he comes to life and... You know, you, do, you don't even have to remote control, actually. You can set it so that he's free roaming and then he just does what he wants to do. It's pretty cool. New Hope poster, this really rad alien uh, uh, shadow box pop-out thing that my wife got me. This is a Steve Whitmore who was the, or Steve Whitmire. He was the uh, voice of Kermit and performed Kermit and Ernie <laughs> and performed Ernie. Anything that Jim Henson was doing kind of went to Steve Whitmire after his death. But Steve also had been working with the Muppets since the 70s. Um, and this was a cool collection of all the characters that he's done um, through the Muppets, Fraggle Rock, Dark Crystal, Dinosaurs, all that stuff. But I met him uh, in 2016 
which was fantastic, and he signed this for me. Conan, we love Conan, you'll see. We love Conan, we love Arnold. Uh, just in general, 80s Arnold is... Fantastic. Yeah, we got Empire Strikes Back, right, Chum? We got the John Wick 2 Hot Toy. Just got... Uh, David Tennant, Tenth Doctor, it's a cool little animation style. Who? <laughs> we like the Who. David Tennant's my favorite Doctor. And then of course we got this King Conan from the Conan film on his throne. He's contemplating. What he's gonna do next? He's gonna go. go yeah, he's gonna pillage the village. He's gonna go rape the women. He's gonna his children. Da, da, da. You know what? No, he's gonna go. He's gonna go be governor. He's gonna go do some gubernatorial things in, in California. A uh, bunch of stuff. Video games and board games and genital mutilation. These these are from uh, the show Sherlock. Good show. <laughs> the number one smash, fantastic show. Yeah. No, I guess we. Yeah, I guess these cool little Sherlock and Watson. Uh, this uh, Han and Carbonite. It's a. Let's see if I can. Where's the. Well, maybe I can't. I don't know. It, it turns on, and you can see some lights and stuff, and it gets you all hot and bothered, but I guess, I don't know. This is a big uh, lightsaber light <laughs> that we got, and then a lightsaber umbrella, Vader. Uh, Return of the Jedi, and then another Conan. Look at Reeves, I can tweak the nipple. I need to lay out some steam. We got uh, this is a Caesar bust from the original Planet of the Apes films. This was the big uh, DVD set uh, when that came out, and in the back. It housed like the whole DVD collection of everything Planet of the Apes back then. Um, I love Planet of the Apes. It is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Speaking of that, Lord of the Rings. We got Sauruman. We got an orc. Gollum. And of course, my main man. James Van Brunt. Uh, this is another. <laughs> Most of this is all uh, Disney films or movies that Katie really likes and I really don't give a crap about. Uh, and also our Christmas movies are up here. Um, but yeah. Mm. Now we're gonna go over here. <laughs> We both love The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, so this is a 11 by 17 that we had a bunch of cast members and John Carpenter sign um, throughout the years. So we, we love this. This is precious. Uh, James Hance is an amazing artist. And he, and he mixes and does a lot of... Uh, pop culture mixing with his art. So this is obviously an up picture, but Star Wars. And then a chill. 11th Doctor Who with E.T. It was great. Uh, look at this, folks. This couch is just a straight up piece of shit. We've had it for far too long, and I can't wait to get rid of it. But what? What is above it? Above it, <laughs> we got 
my favorite Indiana Jones film of all time. Once again, 1984, I'm seven years old. I'm in that theater. I, my aunt dressed me up as Indy. I had like fake stubble and everything. I had a fake whip, whole nine yards. Love, love, love this movie. And it's signed by Drew Struzan, who is a poster legend, a poster creator, artist legend. If you don't know Drew Struzan, then you're ridiculous. You know his art because you grew up on it if you're in your 40s. You beasts. Show some respect. Uh, I love this movie, J.J. Abrams' Super 8. It is basically a giant, giant, sloppy, slathering, slobbery kiss to Amblin Entertainment and Steven Spielberg. And Steven Spielberg just happened to produce it. I love this movie for so many reasons. It made me, like, cry with happiness watching this film when it first came out. And, of course, another movie that makes me cry. <laughs> Happiness and Sadness, E.T. Love it. One of my earliest memories in the theater. And then we got The Rise of Skywalker. You haters are going to hate. You can keep hating. That's okay. Because I'm loving. I love this movie. I love the sequel trilogy. Well, I love The Force Awakens and then this. <laughs> There's some things I like in Last Jedi, but overall... I can do without it. Um, okay, this is our entertainment center. We've got our 65-inch 4K. We got Xbox One S and then a PS4 Pro. These are Katie's. Um, we got the the PS VR. Um, little trinkets. We got Crow and Servo. Oh, my chow. And then uh, you can come over here if you want. Uh, we've gone to Star Wars Celebration a couple times. Um, we love it. It's an amazing convention if you're a giant Star Wars fan like we are. Uh, this is from the 2015 Celebration. Return of the Jedi, and we got a bunch of signatures, and we met a bunch of amazing people. We met Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, Billy D. Williams, uh, Peter Mayhew, who we've met a couple times. Uh, we met Warwick Davis. Um, so yeah, this is signed. This is pretty sweet. Uh, Empire Strikes Back poster that I got for Katie, one of her birthdays, and then we went and had Billy D. Williams sign it. Um, this is very precious to me because uh, we got to meet and talk with Carrie Fisher, um, Crom rest her soul. But this is Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, the sibling Skywalkers, and Katie and I. Another Peter Mayhew, Chewy, Crom rest your soul. And then down here we have Ian McDermott, the um, the Emperor, his signature. Um, so yeah, that's. That's the living room. Why don't I take you into Katie's game room? <laughs> Better do a wipe. <laughs> it's bigger on the inside. Uh, this is uh, our TARDIS door that I painted when we first moved in. We got the decals and everything. We just thought it was perfect. And indeed, it is bigger on the inside. <laughs> yeah, this is primarily Katie's room, my wife. Um, also, Rivers, a lot of Rivers stuff is in here as well, my son. Uh, so this is uh, one of Katie's shelves. Uh, she is a huge gamer. Um, she's a 90s girl. She was born uh mid late 80s 86 i guess but i mean she grew up in the 90s so her her stuff is primarily like uh super nintendo and things of that nature n64 and all that stuff um but it's a menagerie <laughs> it's a cornucopia of of all the the Ninten super nintendo nintendo 
N64 games, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 4, uh, geez, Xbox, Xbox One, Xbox 360, Nintendo DS, <laughs> Nintendo Switch, um, and that's and that's a lot of uh, both River and Katie stuff. But a lot of these maquettes, a lot of these uh, little figures and uh, books and all that stuff. That's all Katie's. Uh, like me, but a little more, I would say she's a huge fantasy nut. She loves fantasy. Um, so yeah, all this stuff is uh, this stuff is hers. So she's got a bow, a sweet bow. She wants to be a badass, you know, warrior and go kill goblins and shit. Do that one of these days. Um, I, this is a Skyrim map. Uh, one of her favorite Nintendo games of all time is Earthbound. She loves Earthbound. This is one of those cool... Uh, these uh, light up and do magical things like take you to far off erotic lands where they... I don't know what this one does. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. But it does something. Um, but yeah, that's cool, right? <laughs> uh, we do have some stuff here in the bathroom. We got another Doctor Who poster, and then we got, I don't know if you can see them, Robocop, Alien, and Back to the Future is over there. I guess it's just to show you that even our bathroom isn't safe from geeky pop culture. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, look. <laughs> Toss a coin to your Witcher, O Valley of Plenty. Uh, Witcher, Earthbound, Horizon Dawn. All Katie's. Uh, we got our Kermit up here. Uh, we both love Jim Henson and the Muppets. I love it far more than Katie. Um, but I think the man is a genius. And... Hello, Kermit the Frog here. Everybody sing! Um, this is uh, Katie's bookshelf. She's got tons of books and more accoutrements up there. Final Fantasy stuff, uh, you know, this is hers as well, Final Fantasy. <laughs> um, she really, really loves The Fifth Element, so I got her this for her birthday many, many moons ago, the uh, Lilu uh, figure from Super 7, one of our cats is named Lilu. Um, and then we, I got her a uh, multi-pass, <laughs> Corbin Dallas, <laughs> Lilu Dallas, multi-pass, uh, Game of Thrones, DuckTales, of course, she loves Futurama, I believe this is Sword Art Online, that's all her stuff, Princess Bride, uh, we met John Berriman from Doctor Who and Arrow, and a whole bunch of other shit, Torchwood. And this is right after I had proposed to Katie. And it's Karen Gillan and Matt Smith. Uh, Doctor Who, of course. Amy Pond, Doctor. This is the big one. <laughs> River, myself, and Katie met David Tennant. And I think River was more excited than <laughs> any of us. He kind of flipped out. Uh, David Tennant is also River's favorite doctor. Then up there we got Nathan Fillion. Uh, I'm a huge fan of, of Firefly. Um, and then this is uh, Zelda. That's hers. Skyrim Clock. That's hers. I got it for her. Uh, I don't know. This is, this is a 55-inch 3D. Um... Katie's got her 
Uh, first, we got this cool pie thing, Majiggy. But we also have the PS2. We've got the original Super Nintendo. We've got Xbox 360. This is Rivers PS4 Pro. Uh, Katie's Wii. We've got two Switches. One is Katie's, one is Rivers. These guys are spoiled. Um, Katie's N64, which is, it looks like Zelda. Um, and then a nut load of, you know, controllers and all sorts of shit. Um, uh, more Katie stuff from Christmas that she didn't take care of yet. <laughs> Uh, I believe this is from Fallout. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not. I'm not a big gamer. My gaming is original Nintendo and um, Sega Genesis. I do like Super Nintendo as well, but um, that's my stuff. So maybe you gamers out there will know what the hell that's from. I don't. Uh, this is her gaming desk. Uh, Futurama, you know, bunch of crap. <laughs> PlayStation logo. Her Zelda shield and sword. Um, Kingdom Hearts key that she got. She loves Final Fantasy. That's seven, eight, nine. Um. One of her favorite films is the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And and she doesn't like the show, which just boggles my mind. Because the show is amazing. Same creator. Joss did both. Anyway, that's Christy Swanson. Uh, she got to meet Christy at a Monster Mania a few years back. Another time we met John Barrowman. And he signed that. This is a, <laughs> we also love the X-Files. Uh, this is us with David Duchovny being wacky me. Yeah. And then us with a bunch of the cast from The Walking Dead. Uh, Warcraft, uh, the God of War, Skyrim. She loves Skyrim. Um, this is where we get in shape, we run, we get the muscles, and we're going, and the protein, and the, all of these things, and the, the, uh, Earthbound, all this stuff, Super Nintendo, pretty cool sign over there, Zelda. So yeah, that's, uh, oh, and then of course she has <laughs> PlayStation, <laughs> Super Nintendo Pilios, there's Zelda Throw, um, Nice little couch. Uh, yeah, so this is the gaming room. Uh, I guess now we'll go into the 80s room. We'll do the 80s room. We'll go. So, hey, how about we go back in time into the 80s room? You fans know what I'm talking about, all right? <laughs> when this baby hits 88 miles, you're going to see some serious. Mr. Falcon. Oh, we've time traveled or bamfed upstairs. So this is my son Rivers' room. You might be like, Dad, we do it. It's messy. Look at how he treats his bed. Imagine the wild and untamed quit dreams he's had. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he's uh, he's a geek, of course. Um, loves Star Wars. Uh, the last couple of years, gotten into He-Man. He loves Transformers. Um, yeah, Star Wars, all this stuff. Spider-Man, Marvel. He loves Marvel. This is his computer. Still trying to man. He, he's he's re he really wants to get into music. Tried this, I don't know what the hell is, I'm terrible at fucking technology, so maybe Zach can figure out what the hell I did wrong, but we can't get this to work. But this is his setup, uh, his toys, you know, Star Wars everything, man. I mean, it's it's everywhere. 
And he's got his big TV and his spot, you know, he's, he's about to turn 13, you know. This is a vintage R2-D2 toy box. I don't know why I gave it to him. But that was gifted to us by, a, by Sir Brandon Bennett moons ago. Uh, he, he loves Seinfeld. <laughs> so he's got his own Kramer. And then he loves Mr. Science Theater and he met Joel one of the times we met Joel. And Joel uh, sort of indoctored, indoctored him <laughs> into the fraternal order of <laughs> Misties, I guess. Crep from the 80s fans will know this room. This is the 80s room. And I wish that it were bigger. But come in. No, you know what? Moonwalk in. Come into the 80s room. Close the door. Oh. It is an overload of nostalgia in this room. Where to begin? I guess from over here. <laughs> uh, this is my original one sheet of Zapped. Teen Wolf 2. Up here is a Mylar from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Ugh. Re, re, redo limited editions, redos of the original packaging for the Cheetos and the Cool Ranch Doritos. I'm a sucker for stupid shit like that. Uh, Castle Grayskull box. Ridiculous 80s posters from stuff that I love, stuff that I don't like. <laughs> um, again, like I said, look. New Coke. I had to get it. Because I remember it. I'm one of the fools that remembers that shit. In 1985, my grandma loved it, and then it was gone. Poof. Uh, Ecto Cooler, when that came back in 2016, and it's coming back again, folks, this year, 2020. Uh, my in-package Ernest still works. You pull the string, he says some crazy shit. You know what I mean? Uh, we love Ernest. Uh, when they brought back the original uh, Pepsi look from the 80s, Michael Jackson Pepsi, Pepsi. Uh, this, folks, this is my original Mr. T doll. Um, lost a lot of accoutrements along the ways, but I was able to dig him up in my old room where I grew up, and I found him, and I have been searching for him in box again uh, to have in my collection. Uh, but he goes for a lot of money, but... If you, if you find the Mr. T doll from the 80s in box, let me know for a good price. Of course, Cherry from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, and this shelf is basically all the stuff that I grew up with in the 80s and early 90s. Um, that's including like Gilligan's Island and the Munsters and stuff like that because it was always a, on reruns on a lot of those channels. So I grew up with it, like Charlie's Angels. Uh, but Roseanne, I mean, this is all 80s family ties. This is this is cartoons, television shows, you know, all that stuff. Amazing. I'm, I'm going to do a video itself of all the, uh, you know, nostalgia line of, of entertainment that I have. Um, I guess we'll do the wall. Um, various entertainment... Um, Ads from comic books from back then, uh, I Love My Seventeens, uh, original posters, comic book fronts, you know, various, like I said, various movies that I love, actually, and some that I just, like, it's it's so, so cheesy and so 80s that I had to put it up there. Um, and then we got original Pound Puppy, original Care Bear. Um, this sweet ass VHS throw blanket that Meredith got me a couple years ago. Captain Caveman. I love my Hanna Barbera. Love Captain Caveman. The original Elf doll. The original Real Ghostbusters Stay Puff plush. Um, that is my original plush from back in the day. 
Uh, the crap from the 80s couch. We have the original Empire Strikes Back sheets. Um, again, various posters and uh, things of that nature. Um, I really love this. This was the... You guys will probably remember um, the uh, Saturday uh, morning preview specials that would air uh, Friday nights uh, in the fall before the new the new load of Saturday morning cartoons. And there were always ads and comic books and TV guides for that. Uh, well, I found a really great, in really good condition version of one of those Saturday morning preview ads. And I had it framed. Look at this, 85 to 86. Snorks, Adventures of the Gummy Bears, Smurfs, Punky Brewster, Elvin and the Chipmunks, Kid Video, Mr. T, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Holy shit, guys. Making me weep. Making me tear up. Making me tingle and jingle and nipple. Nip, 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 nip. Um, I just had to get my extended family, the Keatons, on the wall. <laughs> um, at one point, I will put it in a frame. Uh, my favorite band of all time, Oingo Boingo. This is Danny Elfman, Steve Bartek, the guitarist on his shoulder here, but I fucking love Oingo Boingo. Um, this is the G.I. Joe mask, Matt Tracker figure from 2008. It's fantastic. And boy, was it a cock tease, I tell you, because this was like, look what could be coming. Look at this new mask line, and it never happened. But we're supposed to, man, there's supposed to be a new mask movie, a mask movie coming from Paramount, New mask toys from Hasbro. Hasbro Kenner, because they have the Kenner thing, and they're doing that. They're doing that with uh, um, Ghostbusters as well. Mm -hmm. 2020, bringing back those real Ghostbusters shits. It's going to be amazing. Um, up here, this is a, a video display for Spaceballs. And then we've got an original carded... Bib Fortuna, Return of the Jedi figure. Original carded Weakway, Return of the Jedi. Original carded um, Red Guard. And then we got the repros of Princess Leia and a never before made figure until now, uh, General Moff Tarkin. Um, down here, inbox. Beautiful Punky Brewster. Uh, Inbox V figure. A Mattel Mad Scientist kit. And my in cage Boglin from Mattel. Also, we got the chef, Swedish chef, hiding here from Diamond Select. But this group right here, these are the food fighters. Not all of them. Um, I would like to get all of them because I had pretty much all of them. And their uh, carton, their egg carton of doom, their carton tank. tank. <laughs> anyway, it's amazing. Food Fighters, 1988. Mattel. Man, we got Mattel. We got LJN. I think this is Galoob. Yeah, this is Galoob. Look at this, folks. This, this also warms my heart. This was in 2017. When, when we went to another Star Wars celebration, it was the first time uh, River had been to Florida, been to Disney, been anywhere, really crazy like that. And he met Mark Hamill, and he flipped out. And this was, I love this photo of them together. I love that I can share all this geeky stuff with my son, and that he loves it just as much as I did. And he, he, like, he cries at these movies, like the Marvel movies. He's emotional. The Star Wars movies, he cries. Rise of Jedi, I mean, Rise of Skywalker, he was like bawling at the end out of sadness and happiness. That's just, it's as a father to see that, uh, it swells my pouch. It swells my nuptials, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, this is uh, one of the original Return of the Jedi trash cans. Mm -hmm. And actually down in the theater room... I have an original Return of the Jedi um, food tray. Actually, not the one that I had, but it's the one like the one that I had. Um, 
So this is a Back to the Future little display. We got a hoverboard back there. Uh, the DeLorean. We got the gray sports almanac right here. We got a Hot Toys Marty McFly from Back to the Future 2. Uh, down here, we got Hot Toys Thriller, Michael Jackson. We got a original boombox <laughs> and a Memorex tape. Ooh, look at this, a Degrassi High bookmark. Whew! We're going in the morning, feeling kind of lonely, I'm about to suck my dick. Crazy. And then we got Sideshow. We got uh, Jack Burton over here from Big Trouble in Little China. Down below, I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, an original Sega Genesis. And it works beautifully. Um, it's just not hooked up, but I have played it. Uh, I'm going to be getting a new display area here, like a new uh, entertainment center here, because this, I don't like, it's falling apart, and, but I got my VCR, uh, old, old early 90s television, um, sweet Muppet Babies puzzle, I, th I think this is from 86, 86, something like that, 85, 86, let's see. 86. Uh, Denver, the last dinosaur painting, <laughs> which I thought was pretty rad. This is my original Millennium Falcon. Uh, it needs a lot of parts because it's been through hell. I'm in my 40s, folks, so I got this probably in 81 or 82, so it's, it's very old. But it is still, it's, it's still there. It's still kicking. Uh, that picture is from the time I met Stan Lee. He kind of flipped out. Thank crime I met him. My ski, ski school poster <laughs> signed by a couple of the cast, including uh, Dean Cameron. It needs Stuart Fracken, my friend. Stuart Fracken isn't even on the poster. But he needs to sign this. I, I gotta, I gotta get Stuart Frackett's poster. My V poster, Masters of the Universe uh, movies poster, and then I recently got this Masters of the Universe old school Mattel toy poster. I love it. <clears throat> I think it's beautiful. Um, I don't know if you wanna back up now and get some of this stuff, but. Uh, Reaction Super 7 Teen Wolf figure, 35th Anniversary Slurpee Cup, Ghostbusters. These, these are my original Pizza Hut Back to the Future 2 sunglasses. Uh, it was a promotion when Back to the Future 2 was coming out and from Pizza Hut. These are my mine. From back in the day, Masters of the Universe, Lunchbox, Mask, Muppet Babies, and the very own Krupp from the 80s Lunchbox by... Tom Strickland. Thank you, Tom. Um, the original E.T. Cup. Again, another Captain Caveman. Love me some Hanna-Barbera. I'm a Hanna-Barbarian. Are you? Who didn't? Who, who doesn't remember the, the California Raisins from the 80s? In particular, the California Raisins Christmas Special. Uh, ooh, got to display it, of course. Still wrapped. Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. A bunch of different VHS. Um, some of my favorite uh, Nintendo games. We got Mario Brothers, of course. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Robocop, still in package, still with all their inserts and everything. Um, and one of my favorite Sega Genesis games of all time, and it's terrible. This is my uh, Moonwalker that my son got me for Christmas a couple years ago. Uh, so awesome. That's more VHS. And the original Nintendo still works beautifully. Um, I guess we'll go here. We got some Crossfire. We got Nightmare, the uh, video board game, which is hilarious. Uh, E.T. Uh, Mask board game is down there. Different 80s uh, books about toys, movies, um, cartoons. The, the nostalgia of the 80s and then the few novelizations, some TV guides. I'm really collecting 80s TV guides, folks, so if you have some 80s TV guides that you don't want or you know I can get some 
for good price, just let me know. Um, we got some uh, original McNugget Buddies along with the new Repro McNugget Buddies, but there's some original in there. An original uh, Halloween McNugget Buddy Happy Meal. That is an original. Um, an original Mask VHS, Punky Brewster coloring book. And look at this. This is the original Ghostbusters cereal with the real Ghostbusters hologram front. Um, incredible. This was a Ralston. I ate a lot of Ralston. Remember the Ralston Gremlin cereal? I do. Bill and Ted's Ralston. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ralston cereal. Uh, this is the box for the Nintendo uh, from down there. This is the box for the Horde, the Evil Horde, Fright Zone. Garbage Pail Kids cereal that's new. Um, this is the original E.T. Atari cartridge. Um, this was a fun uh, repro of the original 1985 Ego box that they were doing because of Stranger Things. Thank you, Stranger Things. E.T., uh, this was a narration by Michael Jackson. This is the cassette version with a booklet that I've had since I was a kid. Uh, Masters of the Universe uh, read-along. This was the repro retro Burger King style back in the day. Thanks to Stranger Things. Bringing that back. Feeling that moistness. Um, this is a mask uh, party topper. Freddy Madball. That is a Mego uh, Facts of Life 2D doll. <laughs> Uh, Madball Jason, original box speeder bike, and then a bunch of original Return of the Jedi cards. And let's go here. So this is, of course, the original uh, Ewok village with the box, uh, with some Ewoks from back then. Um, I am recollecting my Return of the Jedi line that I had as a kid, and I am almost there. So here we have the new vintage um, Tatooine skiff, but it's got old the old Jedi Luke and um, a d bunch of different of the characters. This is my original land speeder. This was the very first Star Wars toy I ever got in 1980 or 1981. I can't remember when I got it, but it was that early. Um, and I still remember when I was first playing with it on a shag, on a yellow orange shag carpet. Um, it's seen better days, but this is my original uh, land speeder with Akbar <laughs> chilling in it. Um, this is a Return of the Jedi ATST with an original Chewbacca down here. Um, the original Jabba, the box is down in the uh, living room, which I showed you. But this is the original Jabba playset with all the accoutrements complete. Um, out of box, Bib Fortuna, Bausch, uh, Squid Face, Squid Head. You can call him whatever you want. It always went back and forth on the playground to me. Um, this is a newer vintage Luke, uh, like from the vintage collection line, not from 83. This is the 83 Luke. A um, couple of Gamorrean guards from back then, an original Rancor. We all know the story of what happened to my Rancor, so it's nice to have an original back in my collection. A boxed Rebo Band, which was one of uh, my favorite presents I ever got from my aunt back in the day, back in 83, 84. Um, then we got down here an original uh, Transport, Trooper Transport. We got a uh, Vader. And we got IG-88 complete, boss complete. Um, a pr uh, seeing Better Days Tauntaun, Return of the Jedi dot to dot book, um, an original box of C-3PO's, which was amazing. Uh, that serial was in 85. Um, I loved the serial. I can still taste and remember the serial. So it's great to have that original box. Um, an original uh, ad at still it needs some bits and pieces but it's still in pretty good shape um a empire strikes back uh, hoth playset an original 
Still needs a little, still needs some pieces, but a lot of Star Wars books uh, from back in the day, and a couple of the original glasses from back in the day. Um, another, <laughs> this is a creature from the Black Lagoon uh, video store display from Blockbuster, uh, gifted to me by Carrie. Um, more Fright Night stuff. Hmm. This is really cool. This was when Tom Holland, the director, writer and director, was offering special limited uh, versions of the Fright Night Blu-ray signed by him. And a picture of him signing it to me, to Chris. And then another uh, uh, signed picture from him to me of he and Roddy McDowell from the set. Uh, this Blu-ray was 7 out of 10 Blu-rays that he offered at the time. So I have that one. I, have, I think I have three different versions of Fright Night on Blu-ray. This is the um, uh, 45 of the Jay Giles band Fright Night theme. <laughs> and I had to frame it. Uh, I love the soundtrack. I have different yeah i've got the cassette the cd and the vinyl of the soundtrack um this is a out of time back to the future this is the um license plate and then um we got the new super seven uh filmation retro uh old school line of masters of the universe not all of them but the ones that i love and it's all here on the wall Yeah. Doesn't it fill you with he mania? All right. Now well, let's go up here to mask. Mama, mask. One of my favorite lines of all time. Toy lines. Um, Boulder Hill. I mean, I've got now. See, so there's people out there who collect the whole lines of toys. I don't do that. I only collect the toys that I had as a kid. I don't need to complete the line. I just want to get back what I originally had. And for the most part, guys, this, these two right here are pretty much everything that I had mask. There's a couple of, of um, vehicles that I, that I did have that I still need to add, but I think it's only three, three more and then, pre and then it's complete of what I wanted. But for the most part, this is it, man. And there's various boxes. This is T-Bob and Scott still in package. Um, but just all sorts of stuff. Coloring books. The uh, Color Forms mask is back there. Um, 3D sticker book. I've got just a bunch of different mask stuff. VHS. Of course, I have the mask DVD collection. I love masks, man. Kenner. Kenner. Um, not Kenner, Mattel. So this is some of the Masters of the Universe stuff I have. Um, I gave some to River and then I bought a bunch for River. But these are my, this is my original Fisto. This is my, a lot of these are my originals. This is original, this is original. This is my original He-Man. Um, and I recently was able to pick up Battle Cat for only 15 bucks, which is fantastic. Um, Grizzlor, Leech, that's my original Leech. This is the Slime Pit, of course. Um, the Evil Horde. The Evil Horde are my favorite He-Man villains, by far. I've got a original 1984 um, Evil Horde Grizzlor in card. And then these are the 2000 commemoratives, Evil Lynn and Merman back here. Um, I still want to get the carded horde, the rest of the horde, and the, the rest of the loose horde uh, for my He-Man stuff. Down here is, for the most part, it's real Ghostbusters, um, but there's also Thundercats back there, Sectors, and Centurions, all lines that I loved. Ooh, including recently acquired, gifted, um, Sky Commander, which was a short-lived Kenner. If you watch my Kenner episode... On the channel, you'll see um, I, I go through all the toy lines from Kenner that I loved growing up. But this is real Ghostbusters. Um, I, I am, again, I'm only collecting or recollecting what I originally had. So there's some real Ghostbusters figures that I still need. 
Um, but I'm getting there. And I'm not getting the whole line. Because, guys, there were like six, seven, eight different lines from 86 to like 91 <laughs> of the real Ghostbusters. And back then, I had pretty much all of them. But I'm not going to do that now. Because, no thanks. Um, here is the complete. This is the complete... Uh, Real Ghostbusters Firehouse, uh, gifted to me by Brandon and Dustin Bennett. Thank you, thank you. Um, and this is an original Gray Skull with my original Skeletor and my original Battle Damage He Man. This is my original Battle Damage He Man, and he is fucked. He is not in good shape. Um, but this is this was from my home. My aunt sent it to me from my from my bedroom. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. That's the 80s room. Uh, behind where the camera is is where I edit, um, both my movies and uh, the show. Uh, well, Zach has been editing the show for the last year. And, but he's leaving. I'll have to go back to doing it. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. That is the 80s room. And that, uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And now we're going to go down into the... Spooky theater room. <laughs> Poof. Now, we are going to enter the horror room, the theater room, the home theater room, with all the spooks and specters and gore down there. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, Sir Julian. Sir J let me introduce Sir Julian Sands, everyone. This is Julian Sands from Warlock and Warlock the Armageddon. <laughs> you might be wondering, why the fuck does he have a Warlock the Armageddon poster? Well, friends, I love this film. I saw it twice in theaters. Uh, again, I've, I've mentioned this before, but there was a theater about two hours away from where I grew up um, in the Arnett Mall. And uh, it played some of the coolest, weirdest, early 90s horror shit out there. And I, and I loved it. It's also the theater that in 1987, I was probably one of three people in the theater to see the Monster Squad. I was 10 years old at the Arnett Mall. Anyway, let's go down to the theater room, shall we? <sighs> So yeah, so this is, uh, we got Hellraiser 2, we got Dead Alive, and we got Reanimator. This space is actually, I'm going to be doing some stuff with this space once this crap gets out of here. I'm going to be moving some things in here, um, just so there's a little more of a uh, theme going on in this hallway. Uh, oh look, more Conan. <laughs> So this door leads into where we have, like, the cat shitters, where they do their business. Um, water heater, all that crap. Just space. Stoinky space. Nice and closed off. Let me just close that off. Um, and friends, uh, I'm going to give Zach some photos to show you what this all looked like before we had the home theater put in. Because um, it was not this it was pretty gross um and then we turned it into something magical i hope there's angels singing <laughs> Come in, come in. Welcome. Welcome to the Seavage Home Theater. So this is, this is my happy place, friends. This is, um, this is where all my magic happens. Uh, truth be told, before this was here, I tried to make it a home theater room, and it just, because of what it looked like because of what I was dealing with. It just never worked. It was kind of gross. 
and all of the horror stuff was kind of scattered throughout the house. At one time, the 80s room was a horror room, uh, but I just had so much shit that the horror bled uh, kind of everywhere. And my wife, while there's horror films that she likes, she's not a giant horror fan, so she would much prefer the horror stuff to be in one sort of area. And what better area than the home theater? Um, now, if you've seen posts before, you know that since I was 13 years old, I've dreamt about having a home theater. And, uh, and now I have one. <laughs> In this corner, we have a bunch of my uh, graphic novels, movie books, uh, you know, actor bios, making of movie books, you know, all that type of shit. And we've got, uh, Scareware Productions, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy. I love this thing. I still gotta get a fedora for him. Uh, we got the original house poster in the back, and we got a sideshow premium format, Jason from Friday 3. Um, I've had these Freddy and Jason bobblehead type things for quite some time, very long time. And then the original, the NECA little tiny tune type terror tune Freddy, like that. Um, my favorite Universal monster is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, this silly little like, I guess Halloween or yard display that they did um, is just beautiful. And they they did it for a lot of the other monsters, but for some reason, this one is the most detailed and, f as far as I'm concerned, the best sculpted out of the bunch. And it's beautiful. And we had it mounted on the wall. Um, creature poster, creature VHS, various creature figures and props. Um, love this Gillian Anderson creature photo. Mm, 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 mm. Oh. Monster Squad painting up here. Monster Squad hat. This is the Gilman creature version from the Monster Squad. Steve Wang, Alec Gillis. All those guys from uh, the Stan Winston Company. Another beautiful creature. Um, Scooby-Doo, Little Shop of Horrors, more monsters. I love Frankenstein and the Wolfman, of course. Puppet Master, Radu, <laughs> another creature. We got the Spider Gremlin from Gremlins 2. We got, oh, look at him. We got Chet <laughs> from Weird Science. I love this thing. Of course, we got Godzilla down here. Huge Godzilla fan fans here at the house. I <coughs> got my Fright Night lunchbox. Um, ooh, another <laughs> creature item. Um, this stack here is television shows, different television shows. Um, yeah. Then down here, look at him. We got Crow, Puppet. Um, and then the 120 inch fixed screen. And then over, then, then down here, I love my Part fours, that's a creature picture, but over here we got Friday fours, my favorite Friday. Uh, Halloween four, other than the original Halloween is my favorite Friday, uh, Halloween. This is a pretty badass uh, painting of Freddy, Jason, and Michael. Nightmare four is indeed my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And then we've got Night of the Living Dead 90, which I adore. And then 
We got Tom Servo over here. Both the Crow and Tom Servo, they're both signed by everybody from Mystery Science Theater other than Pearl and Mike. But everybody else has signed them. Um, Subspecies 2, this is a foreign poster. Uh, one of my favorite made-for-television films, The Midnight Hour. This is a Halloween 1985 made-for-TV movie. Love it. Um, this is from the 1989 Vidmark uh, video release. Then up here is the Midnight Hour uh, fake lobby card, <laughs> which was made, which is pretty cool. Um... The Godzilla Criterion set. Midnight Hour on VHS and the soundtrack. This is a pretty sweet The Dark Crystal Chamberlain statue. Um, this is the Phase 1 of Marvel. All the Phase 1 Marvel films are in here. It's their weird ass suitcase. Um, and then I guess the majority of my Blu-rays are right here. This is a collection of horror, uh, science fiction, fantasy, action, and comedy. Um, I'm not a drama fan. I don't own dramas. Uh, if it's, if there is drama, then it's in a, it's in the genre. <laughs> I'm just not a, I don't like real life really, per se. Uh, I live real life. I don't want to watch a movie about real life. You know what I'm saying? So I enjoy having my mind and body and soul taken out of real life. And that's the stuff I prefer. Um, Sam. We got Sam Hyun. Giant fan of Trick or Treat. Uh, Monster Squad signed by uh, Fred Decker, the writer-director. Um, uh, I think somebody else has signed this one. I'm not sure. Um, and up here we got Monster Squad. This was signed by Andre Gower. And then we got a Monster Squ Squad uh, photo with Ryan Lambert, Andre Gower, Stephen Mott, and me and Josh. Again, we love the Monster Squad. Uh, there's a fog poster down there. You can't kind of see it. Night of the Creeps, Fred Decker, signed by Fred Decker and Tom Atkins. Little Night of the Creeps down there as well. And a Night of the Creeps, again, a different time I met Fred Decker when the original DVD was coming out. Um, I love Hammer, Hammer Horror. It's down there is Christopher Lee Frankenstein uh, from Curse of Frankenstein. And one of my favorite Hammer films of all time, The Curse of the Werewolf, starring Oliver Reed. And then a really cool Halloween sexy witch poster by Jeff Zorno. I don't know if you can see it or not. We'll, we'll probably go down there. But um, then we got the couches. <laughs> First little couch, love seat, I guess. And then the back is, is a raised area for more seating. Um, pretty much we can fit, <laughs> maybe not comfortably, but we can fit about 15 humans down in this room. Um, that's the most we've ever been able to fit down here. And that's a lot, believe me. We do a lot of events down here. And 15 was the most I was able to squeeze. Um, well, I guess here... This was a gift I, I gifted Katie when we first started dating. Um, when she was growing up, her father and her uh, loved Creep Show, and they had the original comic magazine, which was what this was, but it ended up being destroyed or ruined in a flood, I think it was. So for, I think, a, a Valentine's present, I tracked it down again on eBay. And this is the original one. Um, and uh, gifted it to her. So there's that. This is a, a Freddy pop art that 
my buddy Meredith gave me, and then this is a, a sign. This is when uh, I met Robert England many, many moons ago. This is pretty cool. This is the newspaper from my favorite Romero zombie film, Day of the Dead. This is the newspaper. Uh, this is signed by Greg Nicotero of KNB. Who's also in the film? Creep Show. We love Creep Show. Uh, this is our beautiful concession stand. Um, we got our fridge here, our popcorn maker. This is where we usually put candy and everything popcorn, spices, all that good stuff. Uh, this is a face cast of Arnold. Uh, that my wife got me a few years ago. Uh, I believe this was from Predator. This was a face cast from Predator. Uh, love this thing. This is a stripe uh, statue. Gremlins. Love it. It's beautiful. Stealing the, stealing the movie candy. Uh, and then, of course... Queen Alien and Ripley with the power loader. These guys are beautiful. These are NECA's, but hot damn. Super great job. Uh, ooh, this is new. <laughs> My good pal, Zach, who's running the camera right now. He gifted me the laser disc for one of my favorite films ever, Tape Heads, 1988. Folks, check it out. It's a quirky, weird, goofy comedy. Love it so much. John Cusack, Tim Robbins, the swanky mobs. Uh, this is, some of you may not know, some of you know. Um, I am a filmmaker. I've been making movies for, oh, in February, it'll be 29 years. Eesh. Uh, but this is when we had a uh, full full spread in Fangoria magazine. If you're a horror kid, if you are a monster kid, if you grew up loving that stuff, then you got Fangoria like I did. And it was always a dream of mine to be in Fangoria. And throughout the years, um, I have been in it as far as like reviews and mentions of my work and whatnot. But this was the first time that it was like a full, full-on interview, and it's amazing. And it's framed. It's cherished. Um, whoop. Over here, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe, Zach, you want to move? Um, this is Roddy McDowell, his face cast, and this is from Fright Night. Fright Night is my favorite horror film of all time. And Roddy McDowell's Peter Vincent is one of my favorite movie characters of all time. Um, so, oh, look, this is a VHS light of Fright Night. <laughs> um, uh, the light up, I don't know. Where, oh, it's, I don't think it's plugged in. Maybe it's not plugged in, but it lights up neon, different colors, and whatnot. Uh, this is pretty cool, but I've never been able to, I haven't put it up yet. I've had it for years. This is a Frankenstein bottle opener. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty neat. Um, and then we've got the Miss Pac-Man machine. Um, my favorite arcade game from the 80s that I played uh, at our Pizza King growing up in Wellsville, New York, and also the Funland Skating Rink, uh, was Miss Pac-Man. I love Miss Pac-Man. I've always wanted a Miss Pac-Man machine, and now we have one in the home, in the home theater. And this was recently modded so that we have 60 different 80s games, 80s arcade games in here, um, which is pretty sweet. Then we got my Fright Night... Uh, theatrical one sheet 
And this is signed by various cast members of Fright Night. Again, it's my favorite horror film of all time. Another Fright Night poster. And then behind there, you can't see it, but it's another Fright Night poster. Um, this is a cool Frankenstein light when you plug it in. This is um, one of the original Friday the 13th uh, video store posters that when each Friday the 13th was coming out, this would be the poster, and this was for part seven. It's in kind of rough shape. Um, a Monster Squad re reunion issue of Rue Morgue. This is the Linnea, Linnea Quigley issue of Gore Zone. Linnea Quigley, you horror hounds know, is one of the original Scream Queens. And I was lucky enough to work with her uh, for a commercial we did for Fright Rags. Uh, my buddy Ben Scrivens owns the t-shirt company Fright Rags. And he's about 10 minutes away from me. You can watch him on this channel in a couple of episodes uh, right now. Um... Michelle Bauer, which is my favorite 80s scream queen. I got to meet her at uh, Cinema Wasteland, and I was like uh, a child. I was just so giggly, and, and she was so amazing to me. She hugged me. She made me feel at home. <laughs> um, another thing I always wanted from my childhood was a comic book rack, and my wife finally got me one. It has some comic books. It's got a lot of Fangoria, Horror Hound, Rue Morgue. Um, ooh, the, the, almost the entire mask run. Uh, ooh, the very first Fangor, yeah, right here. Uh, but yeah, so this is pretty sweet. V Comics, love V. Uh, and then we, you know, crept from the 80s, bro, yeah! So let's, uh, let's pull back and try to get in a different area here so you can see some other things. Uh, I guess you can. You know, do I, do this. I guess you can do it right here. Would it be easier if you were just right here? Oh, are you just gonna be? I'm just gonna. I'll point. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you want to get up there first. What happened here? Uh, so, uh, Tar Man. And then we got the mother from House. And then a Critter. I love all these movies. And that is a Quinn Lord signed picture. You can't really see it. Of Sam from Trick or Treat. Um, this is my amazing <laughs> Epson projector. Uh, down here is my Fright Night collection. My shrine, I guess. Um, various different Fright Night things the original video game uh, VHS, Beta foreign VHS, the soundtracks uh, two versions of the novelization, the comics um, different versions of the Blu-ray the DVDs Fright Night 2, the VHS, the DVD this awesome uh, Peter Vincent figure if you got the uh, documentary of Fright Night which is amazing a bunch of DVDs uh, we got, and then we got They Live Mask, but a bunch of different DVDs. Stuff that haven't come out on Blu-ray yet, and stuff that I don't think will get Blu-ray releases, so I'm going to keep those DVDs. Um, but yeah, we got that over here. Um, eh, there's some stuff down there, but not, not a lot. I mean, my movies are down there, and then we got um, Billy from Silent Night, Deadly Night, Ernest Scared Stupid. And this fun trick-or-treat shrine with a bunch of different trick-or-treat things. Again, love that movie. It was an instant classic. Love it. This actually is from Super 8. <laughs> Maybe you Super 8 fans will remember this. Maybe not, but it's awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only Super 8 fan. Uh, the box, of course. You opened it, they came. Um, <clears throat> Linnea Quigley in this poster. This is the John Carpenter Live poster. A um, couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, for my birthday, all the gang sort of surprised me, and we went to see John Carpenter, and they all showed up 
in New York City, and it was one of the greatest and most surreal times of my life. Truly amazing. If he ever goes on tour again, do yourself a favor. If you're a John Carpenter fan, go see that man live. It is amazing. Uh, <laughs> Scary Terry. <laughs> As uh, the Blu-rays and the sound systems and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, that's, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know if you want to. Oh, I guess we can do that. I will. You can get that there. Yeah. Or you need to get. Yeah. So... Yeah, we're going, but let me actually just get back there. It's better. Yeah. Okay. So there's nothing super significant about what what is up on the wall and what's not. We have a um, folder filled with autographs that I've been getting throughout the years. I've been going to horror conventions and conventions in general since 1993 so <clears throat> and truth be told i am not a giant uh, autograph person uh, i would much rather um take a photo and have the chance to talk with the person rather than get an autograph um but there's certain people um certain uh you know times that i will break uh katie my wife loves getting autographs so that's so, you know, but so throughout the years, um, I got Brad Dorif, uh, who was amazing. He's, of course, the voice of Chucky. Uh, Derek Mears is awesome. The band is awesome. He's so talented. One of the best Jasons, but not just Jason, guys. Like, look up Derek Mears. He has done so much work, and it's all fantastic. He's a really funny dude, too. And he loves Ski Wolf. Uh, this, this is actually pretty freaking cool um so my favorite friday film is friday four uh my favorite final girl is kimberly beck trish jarvis from friday four and it just so happens <laughs> that one of my best friends bobby heckman is dear friends with kimberly beck and for one of my wedding presents um, he bestowed upon me a, uh, this was from Kim, Kimberly Beck, and she signed it, um, to Chris and Katie. Here's the big old Jarvis sandwich hug for you two. Congrats, Kimberly Beck. And it, it meant a lot to me. Uh, and I've met her a couple times, um, and she is amazing. It's just awesome. It's awesome. Um, here is a... Um, God, a lobby card one of a couple different Fright Night lobby cards that I have um, and then this is dope this is me and Josh Josh meeting most of the Fright Night cast again throughout the years I've met them different, different times but this was the first time that we were all sort of together Amanda Bierce William Ragsdale Chris Sarandon, Stephen Jeffries. Oh, frightening. Um, this was when the originals came back out with the um, original uh, packaging. Uh, Count Chocula is my favorite monster cereal. And this is the, the, the art is just some really cool art. There's uh, several different um, artists out there who do mashups like this. So obviously, this is Trick or Treat and The Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. And on the other end there, I don't know if you got it, but that was a Scooby-Doo meets Jason. <laughs> um, so that's pretty rad. There's some stuff on the other side here, but like I said, nothing... I mean, it's not, like, sig super significant. Like, we've had... I don't know why I picked some of these to put up. Like, like Lance Henriksen is over here from Near Dark. And then Miguel Nunez from Friday Five is up here. Um... Which is one of the funniest characters from a Friday film. You're gonna get it, bitch. That's what he signed, because I want him to... It's one of my favorite lines. Everybody has him sign, damn them enchiladas, but no. I did the, you're gonna get it, bitch. 
and then Lance Henriksen from Near Dark. He was awesome. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, this is the theater room. I, I I come down here a lot. This is sort of my. Whereas Katie and River have the game room. This is this is my place. This is the movie room. This is the home theater. Um, I still, from time to time, I come down here and I, I just sit. <laughs> no joke. And I just sit and I look around and I am like, I can't believe that we have this. Now, this isn't like a, believe me, this isn't some like multi-thousand dollar, million dollar home theater. Uh, this is something that you at home could do. Um... It just, it just kind of flips me out that we have this and, and it was a dedicated home theater room and, you know, Katie sort of made it happen um, just because she knew it was a dream of mine at one point <laughs> when I was a kid. And, uh, yeah, so. But, yeah, man, that's, that's the Seavage house. That is Casa de Seavage. And I hope you enjoyed this trip through my memories. <laughs> and uh, remember what Doc Brown always said. Kids, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. <laughs>